now we're getting close. That was perhaps around 450 miles uh, from the uh, Scilly Islands off the coast of England, which would be our landfall. We're still moving nicely. And the closer we got to England, of course, the more we were concerned about who, what the other boats were doing. And, uh, and from the newspapers and whatnot, we learned from that certain steamers had located, uh, had passed and identified some of those boats. But we never got that news, of course, until the race was completed. Here, the breeze came around a little bit more ahead, and we had to uh, trim down a bit. Still, however, a nice breeze kept moving along. As we got near the English coast, we uh, began to pick up a few uh, local fishing boats and things. We sighted a couple of more steamers. One of them we thought was the uh, Aquitania. They, uh, they didn't go out of their way. They just uh, kept along on their regular course. Now, we've got the mizzen staysail, which is a little problem uh, close on the wind. So we'll be taking that, lowering that uh, a bit later. There's a, uh, an English trawler, I believe, up ahead. A good sign that we were up near somewhere near our finish. Buckmore at the helm from Huntington, Long Island. We all had been together in a lot of sailing previously, the uh, 1930 Bermuda race, uh, one of them, and Doraine's first real uh, ocean-going race. And uh, so we all, were, we all were very compatible and friendly and enjoyed each other very much. Olin Stevens in the white sweater is out helping uh, lower the mizzen. And we're getting now, or they're getting, uh, he and Jim Merrill, the, a noon sight as we hope to get up by this evening as the breeze holds up to uh, making landfall on the Scilly Islands, right down at the entrance to the English Channel. That is no mean trick, all any of you know who've tried navigating when the so-called old-fashioned way, uh, pulling the image of the sun down to the horizon and getting a measurement of its altitude is, uh, with the boat bouncing around and whatnot, takes a real expert, and Olin, both Olin and Jim did a grand job on that. And as it turned out, we made a, a perfect landfall on the Scilly Islands. Now, beards were accumulating as the days went by, and on the 15th day, there was a contest for the growth of the beards. And we had three candidates, one you just saw, which was the old rabbit uh, look. This was a General Grant uh, golden hue type. And uh, then there was the, what we call the up the river to Sing Sing type. Very businesslike and rugged. Well, the cook was the judge and he uh, finally decided that the General Grant beard edged out the other two. And the prize then uh, went to uh, me as the uh, winner. And uh, the prize was an extra helping of uh, fig pudding and hard sauce, which was a treat. Now we had to find the lighthouse on Scilly Island, so Rod says I'm going off loft and see what, where we, what we can do. And so he looks as though he just did that every day, and he had done at various times, but a very powerful fellow he was, and uh, that's nothing for faint-hearted people or anybody without a lot of muscle. Up he goes to the upper spreaders. And uh, Olin is below in the cockpit uh, calling up uh, questions, what he sees, and off to starboard, he's supposed to pick up the Bishop's Rock light flare or flash. 
the breeze is letting up a bit now, but we know we're uh, beginning to get there. So Olin says, you can't see it, you better go all the way. So up Rod went, sprouting a tail as he went almost, and uh, off finally to starboard, several points he picked up the light, just to really about where it was supposed to be. And so we knew that we were right where we ought to be and uh, doing about as best as could be expected. So his job done for the moment, that particular job, uh, down Rod came as simply as he went up and, uh, you know, think nothing of it. Just another part of the day's job. So there was a uh, cause for some excitement and uh, cheer as we edged up, still had the breeze behind us. Not as strong, but we moving along seven knots or so. And that night we were off Land's End uh, on the end of England, the southwest end. And those two fishermen came up first thing in the morning. We were pretty much just dead in the water, becalmed. Threw us a couple of crabs and uh, couldn't get them in any one of our pots. So we had to lower them over the other side. We communicated with Land's End. Olin and Rod got the signal book out. And uh, we ended up by, with a, they gave us our position, asked us our name, we, and we had a code, code, our uh, code signal. H flying, and uh, we were trying to, the Rod was trying to find out what to ask him to see if they could tell us position, which he finally did, the words, which am I, and sure enough, back came the message, you are first. And that was um, a cause for almost full pandemonium. The crew really took cheer on that, and uh, Still, of course, about 40 miles odd to go down the channel to Plymouth. Breeze came in a bit astern. That's the Stevens family together, Olin and uh, Rod Sr. and Rod Jr. A wonderful, wonderful family and a wonderful team. And that's the rest of the crew. And uh, obviously admiring the winning beard and just looking as though we'd been out for a day's sail. Got a chance to dry some clothes off a little bit in some of the sails. It appeared that some that a boat had been dispatched from uh, on some word from the uh, uh, from the Coast Guard station about us being around. The boat passed us by, uh, thinking that it just was another yacht out for a sail. And so we proceeded, and this is now the entrance to Plymouth Harbor. Still a little breeze going. We had the spinnaker set, as you saw, trying to get the last inch out, and of course now beginning to look everywhere for the other boats. What other boats? The boats that were supposed to be ahead of us. And as we went in, there was no sign of any. And uh, the King's Harbor Master sits down there in the tower uh, waiting for us. The cook is on deck pulling lines and whatnot, helping out. We jibed over, sailed right down to the line with everything set. The uh, local papers talked about the uh, uh, fleet came out to greet us. Uh, as we sail down uh, in the harbor, and there it is. A couple of local fishermen again cheering, hooray for the Yankees, and so forth. And we're across the line now, as you can see. And later, the old uh, ocean racer, Jolie Breeze, came out with the race committee on board. And sure enough, the raid was first in, actually. No other boats had yet showed up or were even reported very close. So we hold in. We got a cheer from the King's Yacht 
three cheers as we went into our anchorage. They'd been out sailing. That gave us a lot of cheer. We went ashore to the Royal Southwestern Yacht Club and uh, got shaved and had a wonderful meal. And then looked around a while. It was two days later when we went out on Dorade, sailing around the harbor to help welcome the next two boats. Two days later, about uh, 46 hours, and that was the landfall, the big catch, and the, uh, the other uh, big cut of Highland Light right behind him, only 14 or 15 minutes behind after the 3,000 odd miles of sailing. They'd seen each other often, and uh, then, of course, just uh, had it went into a trance when they saw Dorade sailing around for a nice afternoon sail, cheering them as they came in. They were both pretty much scratch boats and uh, had to allow uh, Dorade about 46 hours, 47 hours uh, time allowance. Uh, whereas we actually had uh, managed to be get in ahead of them by about 46 hours. So our margin was uh, rather remarkable for the, uh, for the whole affair. That's Highland Light still coming down, sailing beautifully. And the other boats then uh, came along afterwards. We weren't at all sure for another day until the couple of the smaller boats, the Amberjack, Little Schooner, and the Skoll, a smaller cutter, we had to give some time allowance too, but uh, not anywhere near to make it uh, a close race. That's Highland Light from astern, looking down, and there you see the family, some of the family, Rod's, Nolan's sister, and Ro Nolan's wife, and Mrs. Stevens, and so we had a very happy time all together, and uh, we were entertained saw a great deal of the of England, southern southwest England, and that was the end of that particular race.